God didn't make you to smoke. God didn't make you to party. God didn't make you to get drunk. God didn't make you to lie or swear. Right. God didn't make you to burglarize nobody's house. Right. God didn't make you to walk the streets half naked. Yeah. God made you for his glory. his glory. What does that mean? God made you to worship him. Yeah. God made you to serve him. God made you to bow to him. God made you to walk with him. God made you to talk with him. That's right. God wants you to take on his character. his character. That's why God sent a preacher yeah. that he may dress you up in scripture. That's right. And if you get dressed up in scripture, you're putting on the intelligence of God. What wonderful. And when you put on the intelligence of God, you will robe yourself in the characteristics of God. That's right. And when you put on God's character, you will find a transformation yeah. in the way you think. In the way you live, hallelujah. In the way you talk, you'll be changed. You don't want to go where you used to go no more. That's right. Because now those places and people that used to be appealing to you is no more appealing no more. That's right. And you don't want to be around it. Yeah. You don't even want to hear it. Why? I got hallelujah. hallelujah. I put on That's right. the characteristics of God. That's right. Do you understand? That's right. Come on, son. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 28. All right. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Lord, listen at, listen at this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 28. Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. Chapter 28. And verse 28. Look what God can do to your mind. The Lord shall smite thee. The Lord shall smite thee. Will smite thee. With madness. The Lord. The Lord. Not a sickness. The Lord. Not the devil. The Lord. You may say, why would God do something like that? Because That's right. you had a clear thinking mind. Yeah. You were intelligent. Yeah. You were very focused. Yeah. But look at what you've done with your mind. That's right. You just drank it away. Yeah. Took drugs and contaminated. Oh, yeah. Ran women, ran men, which that's the way you thought with your mind. With your mind. Burglarized people's houses who was minding their business. That's right. Carjacked people. That's your mind. That's your mind. You wouldn't use your intelligence enough to serve God. That's right. Don't you know the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Yeah. That was also in Christ Jesus. God make a mental recommendation. That's right. Your mind gets you in trouble. Yeah. Your mind calls you to go in and out of jail. Oh, yeah. Your mind puts you in the track house. Yeah. Your mind calls you to do things uh, that's totally out of character. So right. God make a recommendation. That's right. Let this mind. Being you. Being you, your mind make you gamble yeah. your hard earned money away. Right. And now you ain't got a dime to feed your children. That's right. So God say, let this mind, let this mind be hallelujah, be in you. Which was also, that in, was Christ also in Christ Jesus. Your mind made you a predator. That's right. Your mind made you a rapist. Your mind made you a racist. Yeah. Your mind made you a bigot. That's right. Your mind made you a thief. So the recommendation of heaven, right. let this mind be in you. you. Hey, let this mind let be, in this you. Mind be in you. Be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. I saw so in Christ Jesus. That's it. What I'm pretty sure I got many hundreds here now. And many thousands looking in yeah. can bear witness. Oh, yeah. Your mind formed a long list of trouble yeah. in your life. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. Why, there's many of you watching and listening now. Go ahead, go ahead. You trying to deal with the trouble based upon a decision you made. That's right. Five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. 30 years ago. Imagine making a decision 30 years ago because the way you think. Right. And now you're dealing with that decision, the results of that decision, 30 years later. That's right. Who would not recommend a better mind than yours? Oh, yeah. And if you're wise, if you're you want a mind better than yours. Oh, yes. Who can think more clearer than God? That's right. Who can think much better than God? That's right. God is all knowing. Oh, yeah. God, God so, so you can't tell me Jesus Christ is not He. Right. For the Bible says Jesus of Nazareth knew all things. Knew all things. Knew all things. 
There's only one that know all things. That's right. And that's Almighty God Himself. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. All right, son. What did he say? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 28. What is it? The Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. And blindness. And what? And blindness. And blindness. And astonishment of heart. And astonishment of heart. Now in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Striking you with madness. Madness. It means he interrupts your thinking. Go ahead. Striking you blindness. with blindness. Blindness. You didn't want to see the things of God. Right. So God can make you blind. Blind. He can make you naturally and spiritual blind That's right. as a form of punishment right. until you accept his will and see things That's right. the way he see it. That's right. Now you get me? Amen. He wants you to see things the way he see it. Oh, yeah. You see, this is why I often say my approach to life is from a scriptural perspective. Because if you approach life with personal feelings and views and ideology and gut feelings, brother, <laughs> you're going to find yourself regretting a lot of decisions you make. It's true. But if you allow your life to be governed by the GPS system of scripture. That's right. Lord, govern my thoughts. That's it. Lord, govern my decisions. That's right. Govern everything I want to do so I can stay in your will. Yeah. See, if I stay in God's will, that makes me open for God's blessing. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. So I never want to lead God's people based upon the way I feel, Wonderful. the way I think. Yeah. No, I always want to lead God's people by God's emotion, God's feeling, God's thought process. And I can find all that in the book of scripture. That's right. That's why you hear me viewers telling you, come on back to Bible. The Bible. I'm telling you, come back to what God think. Yeah. Come back to what God feel. That's right. Come back to what God say. That's right. And if I hold this in front of you, it. brother, it's going to make you disagree with a lot of folk. Amen. Am I right, Isaac? Amen. If I hold the scriptures, scriptures. in front of the White House, yeah. in front of Congress, oh, yeah. in front of politicians, in front of religions, yeah. if I hold what God said yeah. in front of the face of the world, yeah. I am going to find myself fighting against the whole world. That's right. That's right. Because the scripture says about the world, yeah. the world by wisdom. No, not God. Don't know God. No, no God. But it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. Yeah. Glory to God to save them that believe. That believe. Are you listening? Amen. Come on, son. Deuteronomy 28 at verse 28. Yes. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and, and blindness. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness. And astonishment of heart. Astonishment of heart. Now Deuteronomy 28 and verse 35. Yes. The Lord shall smite thee in Look the knees. Look at all this. This is from the Lord. From the Lord. The Lord shall do what? The Lord shall smite thee in the knees. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees. In the knees. And in the legs. In the, what? And in the legs. Here, get a holy in legs. With a sore botch. With a sore botch. That cannot be healed. From the sole of thy yeah, foot. Yeah. You folk don't even know this is in the Bible. <laughs> That's right. From the sole of your feet. From the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. To the top of your head. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king. The Lord shall break thee. The, the Lord shall bring thee. Shall bring thee. And thy king which and thou shalt king, set over thee. And your kings. And, and thy king. What? Which, shall, which thou shalt set over thee. Yes. Unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And what do you mean smiting your knees? That's right. Let's break that down. Smite thee in the knees. Yes. With our knees, Go ahead, man. we bow. Yes. Smiting your knees. In the knees. Represents smiting your pride. That's right. Because bowing is a symbol of humility. That's right. And because you don't want to take your knees and bow. bow. See, when the scripture says every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that 
Jesus Christ as Lord, many take the scriptures and take it literal. But, but you can't take that always literal because everyone don't have knees. That's right. And some folk cannot talk, so they can't confess. That's right. Do you understand? That's right. So the bowing of the knees symbolize submission and humility. That's right. Smiting your knees, he going to smite your pride. That's right. Because you would not give in. Yeah. You would not give up. Oh, yeah. And you would not stand up for him. Now the book of so he's going to smite your knees, it, smite your pride, bring you off your high-mindedness. Go ahead. Nobody can bring you down like God can. That's right. You brag about the money you have until you lose sight on God. God smite your bank account. That's right. You brag about the house you have until you don't respect God. God burned your house to the ground. That's right. You brag about your materialism and before you got it, you serve God. But now that you got it, you put God on the back burner. He smite every materialistic thing you have. That's right. Just materialistic preachers are sent by the devil. That's right. They are sent by the devil to preach materialism, materialism. as a distraction. That's right. From God. That's right. Until they make you believe the more you have, that's when you're greatly blessed. Listen, man, if I don't have two pennies to rub together, yeah. and if I don't have a roof over my head, if I'm down to one shirt oh, yeah. and one pair of pants, but I have repented of my sins yeah. and went down the water in the name of Jesus Christ, I am baptized with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. I have the perfect understanding of who Jesus is. I know he's God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He was God manifested in the flesh, That's right. justified by the Spirit, seen of angels and preached to the Gentiles and believed on in the world. Oh, if I have that, I have more riches than the richest man walking the planet. That's right. I don't care what you own. What you own. You don't have God. Yeah. You're poor. Oh, yes. Did you hear what I said? Oh, yes. You don't have God and you don't know him. Yeah. You're poor. You're poor. Because the greatest form of poverty is when you don't know who your Lord is. That's right. And when you don't know who Jesus is, man, you're not only poor, but you're ignorant. You're ignorant. Come on, son, what did he say? Deuteronomy 28, still at verse 35. What is it? The Lord shall smite thee in the knees. The Lord. I don't want God to smite me in my knees, in brother. In the knees. That's and right. Not wanting him to smite me in my knees. Oh, yeah. I have to stay humble before him. That's right. Acknowledge him in all my ways. Now, therefore, I bow the knee. I can't, yeah. Go I ahead. can't look at the materialistic things that God blessed the church with. All this property and say, oh, we're on top of the world. We ain't on top of nothing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Materialism don't put you on top of no world. That's right, brother. Heaven and earth yeah. is going to pass away. Yeah. And all the works they're in. That's right. You ain't on top of the world. First church ain't on the top of the world. No. The church that Jesus started on top of the mountain. That's right. Not the world. That's right. We have to keep it like the word of God happened. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. The Bible says, give me the, uh, the second chapter. Of the book of Isaiah. Of the book of Isaiah. I started verse 1. Listen at this. The word that Isaiah, the, word son, that of Isaiah, Amos Isaiah, the son of Amos saw. Concerning Judah and concerning Jerusalem. Concerning Judah and Benjamin. And, it, and, and Jerusalem. Ju Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days. It shall come to pass in the last days. That the mountain, that of, the the mountain of the Lord house. Shall be established. Where? In the top of the mountain. Not in the top of the world. In the top of the mountain. It's only in the top of the mountain shall be exalted above the hills of who's coming. All nations shall flow unto it. So God's church. He don't bless the church with materialistic things. That's right. They think you're higher than God higher. or better than God. No. No, no. These materialistic things is just lent to us. That's right. While we live. That's right. And when you die, what do you have? What do you have? Go back to where you were, son. I was in Deuteronomy 28, verse 35. All right, after that, go back to the book of Galatia. Come on, son. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs. The Lord shall smite thee in the, in knees, the knees and in the legs. Now he'll get your whole legs. legs. Now. 
You know your legs are like columns. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Go ahead. I want to take this apart. Don't be narrow-minded in your scripture understanding. Your, the, I believe, the Song of Solomon yeah. described the legs of a woman and said that her legs are like pillars. Yeah. You know what pillars are? Pillars are support columns. Are you listening? That's right. Your legs is a support column to your temple. Go ahead. Your temple is your body. That's right. God smiting your legs. In the legs. He's smiting those things that you rely on. That's right. When you rely on something, you relying on that which give you support. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. So there's things in our lives that we rely on more than we rely on God. Yeah. Until even God call it your arm. Your arm. He said, cuss it be the man that a trust in man that make flesh his arm. His arm. Not his physical arm, yeah. but his support. That's right. His prop. There's nothing wrong with having confidence in somebody. Where you sin is when your confidence in that person is equal to the confidence of God or greater than the confidence you have in God. That's right. What did he say, son? Deuteronomy 28 and verse 35. What is it? The Lord shall smite thee in the knees. He shall smite thee in the knees. And in the legs. In the legs. With a sore botch uh -huh. that, that cannot be healed. What? From the sole of the foot from unto the, the top of, of thy foot, head. From the sole of your foot? Unto the top of thy head. To the top of your head. Now Deuteronomy chapter 29. Now, so anything you're leaning on. No, go back to Galatia. Back in Galatia. Galatia 5th chapter. Amen. Anything I just want to show the people that God is not this picture that you paint. Love, 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 yes. love. Nice, nice, nice. And he That's don't hurt right. nobody. That's right. God do both. That's right. He a beach you. He then he'll come back and heal you after he beat you. That's right. That's what he did to Israel. Oh, yeah. Israel, glory to God, after Moses died and Israel fell into the hands of the judges for an X amount of hundreds of years, yeah. Israel rose up and God delivered Israel in the hands of their own enemies. That's right. And then after they got in the hands of their enemies, Israel humbled themselves before the mighty hands of God. And then the same enemies that God sent to Israel to afflict them. Yeah. God come on back after Israel humbled themselves yep. and delivered them from the enemies that he turned over uh, and gave uh, them Israel for to afflict them. That's right. So there's some things God will bring in your life himself. Oh yeah. You may be getting higher than you even see. Yeah. You may be getting more exalted than you think. That's right. So God know how to bring something in your life. He ain't trying to get your attention. No. I want I want everybody to hear me. It's an insult, viewers, and you that are here, to even use the term. God is trying to get my attention. Yes. Since when did you become so deep? That's right. Since when are you so knowledgeable, so broad? Yeah. That all of something, all of a sudden, a sudden God have made heavens and earth, but you so deep, <laughs> you so intelligent, yeah. he had to try, try to, do it. to get your attention. God wants your attention, he get it. Oh yes. The problem with many of us, we don't recognize who's getting it. That's right. We just blame it on a freak accident sometime. <laughs> That's, right. Or That's right. We so quick to say, Lord, please let the devil take his hand off of me. Yeah. And the devil hand or finger may not even be touching you. That's right. It can be God himself. God himself. Working on you. That's right. Come on, son. Back in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. What is it? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. So once the Lord make us free. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, don't declare you're free from something yeah. when you're still struggling with it That's right. or you still have trouble with it. That's Forget right. what these false prophets talk, touch and claim it. That's, that don't exist. No. That's faking. Oh, yeah. Either you delivered or you're not. Or you're not. Is that right? That's right. The Bible don't teach touch and claim nothing. No. Either I'm waiting on God to do something for me 
or either my prayer have been answered. Don't touch and claim nothing. You can go out in the parking lot and touch my car and get about 10 people to hold hands around my car and all get together. Oh, Lord, we wanted you to give Brother William this car. Hey, Lord, God. Uh-huh. When you're done, I'm going to get my key. <laughs> get in my car. I'm going to tell y'all prayer band. Y'all, y'all go pray over there in the corner. And I'm going to drive off. Bye. That's right. Touch and claim is out of hell. Amen. I want everybody to get this. I want to rock your world and blast it to hell. That's right. You've been deceived by the devil. Yeah. Touch and claim is devil teaching. That's right. It's deception. Yeah. It's a lie. It's a lie. Bible don't say it. Jesus never preached it. No. And I don't believe it. That's right. The Bible don't say it. I don't believe that mess. <laughs> That's right. What did he say here? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Wherewith Christ has Where made us free. Wherewith Christ have made me free. And be not entangled again. How? And be not entangled again. How? And be not entangled again. With what? With the yoke of bondage. Now look at your life. Look at your life. There are many things and many lives of viewers and you that are here. <clears throat> that you found yourself so entangled Entangled. in until you never thought you would become that entangled with it. That's right. When you are entangled so deep, it captivates your mind. Yeah. You function by the way, though that entanglement got you thinking. That's right. Captivates your heart. Now the way you respond to people, and the way you involve yourself with things is based upon your heart being in a certain form of captivity, yep. which dictates the motion of your body. That's right. So now you used to participate in church. Now you don't. Mm-hmm. Now you used to love working in church. Now you don't. Now, you don't. now you're used to wish up God in spirit and in truth. Now you don't. Because you allow your mind and your heart to be captured, imprisoned, in bondage by something or someone. That's right. That's right. I wouldn't want nothing to control my mind. No, no one control my mind, my heart, until I can think the way God want me to think. That's right. I can't feel for him yeah. what I used to feel. That's right. That's right. I can't even pray to him like I used to pray. Oh, yeah. Because I'm in prison, in- mental and emotional bondage. That's right. Many of you viewers, your preacher tell you, don't watch this program. Yeah. Ask him, why not? Why not? What is he afraid of? <laughs> That's right. If he claim he got the truth, then he shouldn't mind you watching this. That's right. Shouldn't mind. What is he afraid of? My God, man, he's afraid because this thing will open your eyes wider than it ever been open. Oh, yeah. Many of you husbands don't want your wives to watch this. Many of you wives don't want your husbands to watch this because if they start being exposed to this, they're going to find out one of you got to leave. That's right. I don't want that. Amen. They gon' they, they are, he or she is afraid that that second marriage somebody is going to obey the Bible, yeah. and that second marriage now going to collapse, and you're gonna have to stop, and you're gonna have to go back to your first wife or first husband, and if you don't want neither one, you have to stay neutral yeah, until God takes the other life. That's right. They say, don't, don't watch that preacher. Don't watch him. Don't watch that. They give you any excuse. He's too vulgar. He's too rude. He's too mean. He's too nasty. They give you every excuse under the sun. Amen. Amen. I've talked to many men who are living together with women and not married. And they give me their testimony how they have this many times. To, uh, to strain their girlfriend from scratching them up and throwing oh, pots and dishes and chasing them around the house with knives all because the man told them look 
we can't live together like this no more mm. and uh, I want to serve the Lord and that woman cussed him out why are you mother so and so you've been watching that Geno Genesis and you know what's so ironic she's the one that turned him on to me <laughs> Amen. see some of you out there turn your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your friend onto the program right assuming one day they may they, you don't think that one day they're going to obey it right you assume they're never going to obey it that's right that's right that oh, god brother came and talked to me he had so many scratches all over his face and neck my she lord. clawed them down <laughs> my lord clawed them down my had lord. to call the police on her Mm. Get a restraining order, order, order on his girlfriend just because he wanted to be baptized. My Lord. Lord, help. Lord thank God. Listen, yeah, 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 the old troublemaker. And I don't have that title loosely. <laughs> we, by God's permission, we are a troublemaker. Oh, yeah. And let me tell you this, viewers I love making trouble. <laughs> hey! Amen. This is good trouble. Good trouble. This type of trouble will keep me out of hell. That's right. The trouble you cause for me will send me to hell. Oh, yeah. Now, what trouble do you want? What trouble do you Bible trouble that keep you out of hell? Yeah. Or trouble that I send you to hell? That's right. Be wise now. Don't be an arrogant, self-righteous, hell-bound fool. Oh, yeah. Everybody that's living today, you came here the same way. Yeah. Naked. Naked you came in the world. Naked. Glory to God and naked you shall return. That's right. Hear this now. Galatians 5 and verse 1. That's what? Stand fast, therefore. You that have been free. Yeah. Stand in it. Stand fast. I know you, the devil going to fight you. Yes, he will. I know you're going to have withdrawal symptoms. That's right. And a lot of those withdrawal symptoms is not from the devil. It's because of your own experience that you're trying to abstain from. Right. That's right. Let us just call a spade a spade and put it in the right category. That's right. It is not always the devil. No. A lot of time your withdrawal symptoms is because you, listen, if you've been living a particular way, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. And now you're trying to change. They live the way that only God can outline. Yeah. People can talk all they want. Oh, yes. They don't know your background. That's right. They don't know what you was dealing with. That's right. They don't know the testimony you have to what God is bringing you out of. Yeah. Coming out of your past is equivalent to a snake. Oh, yeah. Who time to shed skin is at hand. And a snake never sheds skin by rubbing up against something soft. That's right. That snake got to rub up against something rough. Rough. And when it rub up against something rough, the purpose is that the roughness will peel off the old skin. The roughness of the doctrine of the apostles is to peel off right. the old man. That's right. Am I right? That's right. That's why you viewers out there that go to these watered down sugar baby churches that's being led by sugar daddies. Go ahead. You will never come out of sin. No. You will never get right no. because you need something rough no. for your soul to rub up against. That's right. Oh, thank God. Jesus said if you fall on this stone, this stone. you shall be broken. Right. right. But if it fall on you, grind you to powder. it'll grind you to powder. To powder. That's right. Amen. So the roughness and toughness and the hardcore of the hardcore. preaching of holiness is designed because the Lord know how stubborn oh, yes. that old skin is. Oh, yes. How stubborn the old man is because the old man's affect your mind, yeah. the way you think, it affect your heart the way you feel yeah. and it affect your body oh, yeah. based upon what you do yes. there's some things that you want to do with your body you know you don't really want to stop doing it That's right. there's thoughts you have listen thoughts. if the bible didn't preach against them you would try to increase those thoughts oh yes 
there's feelings that you have towards things that if the Lord didn't speak out against them, you would try to find ways to amplify the way you feel. That's right. So the eternal God, amen, that made the worlds and everything therein, he come along here so man can change. And in order for man to do it, this is why God was manifested in the flesh. In the flesh. In the flesh. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh, flesh, and Jesus Christ was he. That's right. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 3.16, without controversy, right. meaning without argument, and don't need arguing about it or debating about it, without controversy. Great is the mystery of God. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. Who was? God was manifest in the flesh. That means God walked in the flesh. God talked in the flesh. God killed in the flesh. God prayed in the flesh. God preached in the flesh. God left a pattern of good works in, in, the, flesh. Flesh. in the flesh. God left an example for men and women to follow in the flesh. That's right. To prove to men and women you can do this. That's right. See, God, listen, if God wouldn't have left me an example, he don't need for God to tell me how to live holy. No. I need someone to show me. That's he right. couldn't put all this confidence in the prophets because David said in my hasting, yeah. I found all men liars. All men liars. The prophets had sin in them just like everything else. That's right. But when Jesus came here, Jesus come. glory to God without a spot or without a wrinkle in his lifestyle. Oh, yes. Amen. He come along in the flesh teaching us how to walk, how to talk, how to live. That's right. Teaching us how to pray. Amen. That body was nothing but a pattern, pattern. an example to demonstrate the will of the Father, the That's will right. of the Spirit, That's the right. will of the Holy Ghost, the will of Jehovah, the will of Elohim, the Holy. will of I am. Who is that? The will of God. The will of God. Without controversy. Without controversy. Great is the mystery Great. of godliness. Glory to be to God. Is the mystery of godliness. Now, God coming in the flesh let you know it wasn't an ordinary thing. It was an extraordinary thing right. for him to conceive or make a body in a woman's body without the aid of a man. The aid of a man. So that was a mystery. Oh, yes. It was so much of a mystery until when Gabriel told Mary about it, she said, how can this be? How this be? Seeing I don't know a man. No man. How can this be? And Gabriel had the message of God and told her, look, the power of the highest will come upon you. That's right. And that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Son of God. The Son of God was the body of Christ Jesus. And that body consists of flesh and blood, right. came out the generation of Shem, out the tribe of Judah from the house of David. And God was in that body. The Bible says to wit, God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself. The body was the mediator, meaning it was between the human family and the eternal spirit. Right. The body was the sacrifice. That's what was called the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. The Bible, the body was called a minister because it showed us how to serve the Spirit. Right. The body was called a prophet because by the Spirit, Jesus come along and prophesied the things that would be. Here it is, the body was called the apostles the because apostles. the first one in the church is the apostles the and his flesh was the first member of the body of Christ until the Bible says the head of the church is Christ. Christ. Go ahead. Here you get what I'm talking. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, take God. What is that? And without controversy. No need talking. Great is the mystery of godliness. What did God do? God was manifest in the flesh. That's what Jesus was. Oh, yes. He was God's flesh. That's right. He was God's body. That's right. That was God's clothing. Oh, yes. God couldn't redeem me the way he was being no spirit. That's right. A spirit can't bleed. A spirit can't shed no blood. That's right. So he come along and put on flesh and blood until the Apostle Paul said when he went to Philippi to the church of Philippians and the second chapter he said God took upon him That's right. the form of a servant. Form of a servant. And the form of that servant was the shape of man. That's and that man was Christ Jesus himself who bared the title son of God or servant of God. That's right.